All right, welcome back to the Dr. Doug Show, your resource for bone health, hormone optimization, and health span. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've been sent this video that I'm gonna show multiple times by multiple, both patients, as well as members of our health span community, and even people on YouTube, because I talk often about hormone optimization. I talk about the potential risks, the tremendous benefits, and obviously I'm a big advocate for replacing hormones when it makes sense, when that equation makes sense. There are some videos out there on the internet, one of which I'm going to show today, which I think really falsely um, accuse hormones uh, of being unsafe in some ways, and particularly this conversation around bioidentical hormones. So I want to play a video today by Dr. Berg, and I'll talk a little bit about what I think about Dr. Berg. The short is, I like Dr. Berg, but in this video, I think he gets really off track. And again, I've been sent this particular video over and over again. So I want to use this as an example of where this conversation can go awry. So stick around. We're going to go through this video. I'm going to show a little excerpts of it. I'm going to talk about my experience, my uh, uh, understanding of the data, how we use it in practice so that we can understand the benefits of bioidentical hormones and we can separate the concerns that he brings up versus the concerns as I see them through the literature. So stick around. All right, so before we get to the video, let me just take a moment to explain uh, my relationship with Dr. Berg, his work. I don't know him personally, but I've been a fan of Dr. Berg's work for a long time. So I think he does a great job of researching. I like his videos. I think they deliver information in a great way. So this is nothing bad about Dr. Berg. But this topic, uh, I think he delivers it in a way that I've seen in other places and uh, it's very objective and I just simply want to give some feedback based off of the evidence and how we practice. So that's why I'm using Dr. Berg. It's not because I don't like Dr. Berg. It's not because I don't like chiropractors. I have many, many chiropractors in my wife's side of the family. And I think that they can definitely do a great job of explaining information, providing services, no issues there whatsoever. I'm using Dr. Berg again because he's popular and I've been sent this specific video multiple times. So I want to get into this video. So here we go. All right. So the very beginning of this video, he talks about what hormones are. I'm going to skip over that because I think most people watching this understand what hormones are. This is where he starts to talk about when potentially you, someone might want to take hormones. And I want to give a little feedback on that. The endocrine system is a superior communication system composing of glands and hormones and the coordination thereof, okay? So you end up with low testosterone, low thyroid hormone, low estrogen, low growth hormone, and you're thinking, wow, I'm just gonna take some bioidentical hormones because I don't have enough because I'm getting older, right? Well, the problem is there's side effects. And this question is never asked. Why does your glands stop talking in the first place? This is what needs to be looked at right here. All right. So I think that the, the biggest challenge here out of the gate is that he's not really specifying an age group. So I agree that in a, a younger population and specifically women here in a premenopausal population, if someone has low testosterone, low sex hormones, specifically estrogen or progesterone, then yes, we should be investigating why does someone have low testosterone? Why would a woman have low testosterone, low progesterone, especially low estrogen, not as common. Um, but those two are very commonly associated with adrenal dysfunction, potentially gut dysfunction, immune system dysfunction. There's a very clear reason that underlies low testosterone or low progesterone in premenopausal women. So I'm totally in agreement here. But the fact that he doesn't say that specific thing about a population leads many postmenopausal women to be wondering, gosh, why did my glands stop working? Why am I not making hormones? And it's simply because there is a point in time in which a woman's body stops making hormones. That's the definition of menopause. You stop cycling. And so the ovaries stop making some of your hormones. Now your adrenal glands do still work. So this is an important point that I think a lot of women miss, which is that if 75% of your testosterone comes from your adrenal glands or products from your adrenal glands, um, it is possible that postmenopausal women may not be low on testosterone. So if they are, then we could still potentially look for that underlying cause. But we see so commonly that postmenopausal women are also low on testosterone that we certainly want to test it. But I don't think that we should be afraid to replace it again if the risk and benefit analysis makes sense. All right. So let's continue on now that that's cleared up. Okay. Why do you have low hormones? 
Now you say, well, I'm going to take bioidentical hormones because they're safer. Well, you know what? I'd like to see the study on that. There are no studies that I know of, unless you show me, um, that compare bioidentical hormones, like the risks versus synthetic hormones. And we know that synthetic hormones have major risk problems. Uh, there might be some studies, but I've never seen any. Okay. So we'll just stop there for a quick second. Um, so let's just define bioidentical hormones. Um, this is a, a term that gets thrown out there. It is really a marketing term, and th this can be frustrating for a lot of providers and for patients because they don't really know what it means. So what is a bioidentical hormone? Well, the way that I've been trained and what I talk to my patients about is that when we're talking about specifically the hormones progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen, specifically estradiol, when I say bioidentical, what I mean is it's the same structure as the, the hormone that's made endogenously or inside the body. So let's just take estrogen, for example. So when I replace estrogen, I use estradiol. Estradiol is a form of estrogen. The, the female body, well, all, all human bodies, have three main estrogens, estriol, estradiol, and estrone. Estradiol is the most potent of the three. So when we replace estrogen, um, I personally use estradiol alone. Some people will use a combination of all three, topic for another day. But if you replace estradiol, whether it be through a pharmaceutical patch, an oral capsule, or a bioidentical cream that's also estradiol, they are all technically bioidentical. They are also all technically synthetic. And this is really confusing. People will say, well, I want to take a natural bioidentical. Well, they're all synthetic. They're all made from different things. And so they're all coming from outside the body. So bioidentical, when it comes to estrogen, specifically estradiol, can come from a commercial capsule. It can come from a commercial um, uh, dot or patch, or it can come from a bioidentical um, cream that you would get from a compounding pharmacy. There's different reasons, variations why you would do one over the other, uh, but they are all what I would consider to be quote unquote bioidentical. Now what's not bioidentical and also synthetic are some of the other commercial products. So specifically when we talk about estrogen and you go back and talk about studies from the early 2000s, like the Women's Health Initiative, you know, they were using Premarin. Premarin is not estradiol alone, although there is estradiol in it. Premarin is an oral preparation from horses that has up to seven different estrogens in it in varying um, um, percentages. And so it's not going to be bioidentical to a human estrogen, uh, whether or not you're using all three or just estradiol, because it's not the same thing. So there is a difference there. So uh, estradiol, bioidentical through all the things I just said versus a synthetic oral that is not just estradiol or coming from other sources. So that's estrogen. And then there's the progesterone. Now, this is probably the biggest difference here because many papers and doctors will talk about the synthetic progesterone versus what I would consider the bioidentical progesterone as the same thing. And they are not the same thing. Again, go back to those early studies from the 2000s, the Women's Health Initiative, and, and many other studies from that era. And they used synthetic progesterones, which are going to be called progestins. So progestins are sometimes called progestogens. Progestins are synthetic. They are not the same compound as progesterone. They were made back in the 1950s because progesterone was not particularly orally bioavailable. So when it was available, but when you took it, it your body couldn't absorb it very well. Until we could micronize it as an industry, it wasn't available um, bioavailable orally. So the synthetic progestins got a foothold in the pharmaceutical industry. Obviously, they can also patent those things. So there's a financial component to this. So we saw many, many millions of women put on Provera, which is a uh, progestin, specifically medroxyprogesterone medroxy acetate, MPA, but they were put on progestin, Provera, and Premarin. So Premarin and Provera goes together nicely. And so many of these studies, including the Women's Health Initiative, use these synthetic progestins instead of progesterone. This is where a lot of the risk actually comes from. So the increased risk of blood clot, heart attack, stroke, invasive breast cancer, all those things shown in the Women's Health Initiative were more likely due to the progestin than from the estradiol. And that's, a, again, topic for another day. Loved talking about that. And we have videos on that. But the progestin is different than progesterone. Micronized progesterone, also available both commercially and compounded, 
micronized progesterone is quote unquote bioidentical. So again, there is a commercial, which has been well studied and uh, uh, the compounded form of uh, micronized progesterone, which you can get for again, for variable reasons. And then lastly, testosterone, compounded testosterone versus commercial testosterone. It's the same thing. It's the same compound that you're going to find in the body as testosterone. So most testosterone preparations are quote unquote bioidentical. And so uh, this this conversation that Dr. Berg is bringing up here and saying, well, there are no studies comparing bioidentical to synthetic. That's not really true. Because if you look at a, a number of large studies, and I'm not going to go through them here, but if you look at a, a number of large studies, they will use um, the micronized progesterone, the commercial form, which is going to be the same as the uh, compounded form. So uh, Prometrium is the commercial form, and that is used in many large studies. So there are studies comparing that versus the progestins, and they are safer. So I don't need to get into this. This is very, very well proven. So that is a false statement on that perspective. And then estradiol, both oral and patches and creams have also been studied very extensively, and they are going to be safer with less risk than the oral premarin, which is going to have a slightly higher blood clot risk likely uh, than um, uh, oral estradiol, but I still prefer to use patches because that reduces that risk back to a normal baseline risk of blood clot, heart attack, and stroke. So um, there again are many studies looking at estradiol, um, which is bioidentical versus something like premarin. So those studies have also been done. Testosterone, there really isn't a commercial preparation for women. And again, for men, this, this the same, it's the same compound. So we don't need to have that discussion around testosterone either. So this specific statement to say that there's no studies looking at this, I think this is false and that needs to be cleared up. All right, so let's go on to the next section. Instead of starting to chase around some of these symptoms, first get in the basics. I'm talking about a healthy eating plan, like healthy ketosis, to a lot of cruciferous vegetables or gland that is not produced. All right, so the section that I skipped over here, he talks about other uh, areas where uh, there might be an issue with hormones. Um, and again, these are things that are gonna have an impact on men and premenopausal women, certainly perimenopausal women. Um, and that's not really what my point is here. He's right about all those things too, by the way. So if you wanna listen to this, you could find some benefit in that. Um, but specifically, again, he doesn't mention postmenopausal women and he doesn't really clarify that postmenopausal women are not going to see the potential benefits of looking at these things other than for their adrenal glands, which wouldn't be bad, but it's not gonna give them estrogen and progesterone back. And in this last section, he talks about, you know, kind of three ways that you could optimize your hormones. And one is diet. And yes, I'm all for optimizing diet. It's going to be great for bone health. It's going to be great for, for some of your hormones like adrenal, insulin, uh, you know, cortisol, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> but it is not going to give you back your estrogen and progesterone. And I do see this not infrequently where I will uh, have a, a consultation with a woman and she'll be uh, telling me that she's trying to naturally improve her hormones and she's working with a functional medicine provider and they're naturally uh, uh, optimizing her estrogen and progesterone in postmenopausal state. Look, you can optimize whatever you have left, but you're not going to make more. And so that next part where he gets into talking about cruciferous vegetables, there are compounds in cruciferous vegetables, which will help with estrogen detox, but you have to have estrogen to improve estrogen detox. If you, if you don't have functioning ovaries, the only estrogen you'll have is from conversion of testosterone. It's very rare for a woman in her postmenopausal state, in my experience, to have naturally adequate testosterone to even see a smidge of estrogen uh, converting from that. So working on detox for estrogen that you're not making in your ovaries is probably not going to significantly impact your symptoms. Same thing with progesterone. You are not going to optimize progesterone that you're not making, if that all makes sense. And then the last part here is he talks about taking glandulars. A glandular is not going to have an impact in a postmenopausal state. Maybe in a premenopausal state, perimenopausal state, there's some interesting evidence there. Again, topic for another day. So I hope that all makes sense, that what he's talking about here is premenopausal, perimenopausal, men, all those things might be true in those age groups, but this is not true for postmenopausal women, and we should not lean on these types of tools, whether it comes from Dr. Berg or from whomever else, should not lean on these tools to improve your hormones in a postmenopausal state if you are not on hormone replacement. And then it, it really the biggest thing I wanted to point out here is that the... Um, the statement that bioidenticals have not been compared to commercial products or traditional hormone replacement, that's a non-true statement. That is not true. There are plenty of studies looking at estradiol, 
studies looking at testosterone, studies looking at micronized progesterone in comparing the risks and benefits to other commercially available products. All right, so that was a video looking specifically at statements from Dr. Berg around bioidentical hormone replacement. If you enjoyed that, you might also enjoy this video uh, called Does Estrogen Cause Breast Cancer or Build Bone? So that's very specific on estradiol and bone building. And then there's another video we have for you called Hormone Replacement, Estrogen and Osteoporosis, Fear and Hope. It's an older video, but a nice review of estrogen as well. All right. Thanks so much for listening to this video. I hope you enjoyed that type of content. If you are still trying to put together all the different pieces of your osteoporosis plan, consider joining our masterclass. Masterclass, link in the description or on drdouglucas.com. It's totally free. It's where we put together how we're managing patients in our full service program, and you get a chance to ask questions. So I strongly encourage you to sign up for that if you haven't done that already. Again, it's totally free. And that's it. All I have for you right now, my friends, remember that you are created for greatness. So seek optimal, not average. Don't be afraid to be extraordinary because you are, and that's what it takes. I'll see you next time.